I met a gypsy. Yeah, it's, you know, like I, I enjoy it. I wish I just had more time. I mean, I've got three jobs that really all require a full-time effort and I'm yeah. somehow splitting it up. So it's, it's cutting my time up a little bit. I'd like to do more. I just don't have the time. And right now it's just not quite to a place where I could hire an assistant to come in and help. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's crazy. Like you said, the, the possibilities and the opportunity between just the internet and social media, man, you just, it's crazy what you can do. So what was the, um, what was the initial, uh, I guess like the genesis of whiskey throttle show. Cause it's a fucking great show that you guys have done. And I think to the fact that you guys did it with like the live audience as well, that was like a really cool point of difference to other shows. Um, and then I think yeah. you and GL have a, a great dynamic. I fucking love that loose cunt. Like, he is a wild man in every, he is a Zulu as it gets that motherfucker. Yeah. Amen. Uh, <laughs> it started out, um, you know, I, I went on DMXS for years when I was commentating the nationals, mm. I, I was, we were voicing it over in Atlanta. So I'd fly into Atlanta, oh. do the DMXS show that night in studio. I did that for a year, you know, and then, They're the best man, uh, they vo voice it over and then fly home. And so I got to be really good. Iser and Kevin are like the coolest, They're just the good, nicest, coolest good, guys. You good could, people, great, great people. And he helped me a lot. Iser did. I, I said, Hey dude, I'm thinking of doing this. And he gave me so much advice. He goes, tell your producer to call me. I'll help him. I mean, he helped us over a lot of hurdles that we would have stumbled. Um, but then I, I got to, um, I got to listening to a lot of Rogan and yep. you know, his guests, um, I liked the way I like, like I was saying or when the show's over, maybe it's somebody I didn't even know. Um, I remember listening to Elon Musk's, uh, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. You know, a handful of these guys, and I didn't know really anything about them. And when I got done, I felt like, wow, I really, I kind of got a vibe of who this dude is. Like, I, I really kind of feel like I know him and now I'm, I'm connected and, and I started following those guys on social media and I'm, when they post something, you know, like it engaged me Yeah. and I thought, shit, there's nothing really like that. Like everybody does their interviews over the phone. Um, no one's really doing, there was a live shows were pretty rare. Like they would go here and there, but I thought, what if no one was doing YouTube? Um, at the time I'm like, what if we made like a YouTube show that was also available in a podcast and it was long form. Like we just went as long as we needed to go. And, and when we started the concept, I thought we'd probably go like what, two hours you think? Yeah. And we're like, Oh, that's a long time. Everyone's like no more than 30 minutes. No one has any interest in listening for anything for more than 30 minutes. And I'm like, I've listened to some four hour Rogan shows and like, I'm in, I'm, I mean, yeah. I'm in, I get to where I'm going and I'm like, shit, I sit in my car and keep listening for a little while. Cause I don't want to turn it off. So I just said, no, fuck it. We're going to go as long as we can go. Let's plan on two, two and a half hours, you know? And then when Roger came on, which is a fucking tough way to start your first show, right? You got <laughs> Roger DeCoster. I could have talked to this dude for a month and yeah, uh, yeah. just broke it down by year. It was four hours, you know, and we, and I had to, I had a list of questions. I don't know how many pages long and I had to just start scratching shit off. I'm like, no, no, I don't have time. I don't have time. I mean, I got to get this guy out of here. He was drinking wine and he was starting to get tired and sleepy. I'm like, we gotta be done, dude. <laughs> but anyway, it just, after that, I was like, wow, that was, that was crazy. I learned so much shit. He told stories. Like, I don't know if you caught that show, but like he told, taught, told us about Jeremy's throttle on that Suzuki, um, uh. uh, that year that he rode for Suzuki, his mechanic, he had to have Wyatt seals. Jeremy was adamant. Wyatt was hooked up with some chick and super distracted. And they finally, they, they busted Roger and Mitch busted their ass on that Suzuki to get it to, to run. It was a third and they got it working and the test bike, Jeremy's like, I'm good. I'm happy with this. I'm happy with it. And then they go to the race and he's like, I don't know, man, I'm, the clutch doesn't feel right. And I just doesn't feel fast. And so about halfway through the season, Roger is like flying in late and then getting the first flight out to get back to hit this pussy. He was just super whipped and not <laughs> focused on, you, you gotta be all in on a, a guy like that, a job like that. Yeah. And so he goes, he's fucking done. We're bringing Skip back in. Skip breaks the bike down as it was from the last race. He goes, um, look at this. He, he's got the, the air boot off. He twists the throttle wide open. It's only going up three quarters of the way. He had put a Honda cable on it, which was super common back then. We use Honda brakes and levers and cables and chicks. They were just better quality, but it was too short and wide open was not wide open. Well, there's your, there's your horsepower problem. And then the way he put the clutch in, it was something was wrong and there was shit. It wasn't like 
put together right. Skip's going like, what the fuck, dude? Roger goes, if we'd have started with Skip, Jeremy wins that title before the end. No question. Yeah, that's like, so Whoa. heavy. Super heavy. Um, so he's telling shit like that and about how his first bike, his dad didn't want him to race, so he, he bought it on his own, didn't tell his dad, hid it in his buddy's garage. And his dad used to always sit there and read the paper at night by the fire, and he's sitting there reading the paper. And Roger had this little local race, and he, his dad goes, Roger DeCosta wins local motocross race. <laughs> It's, that's how his dad found out he was racing. And uh, he goes, I thought I was going to get in so much trouble. And my dad goes, oh, I didn't know you were racing, you know, you know, and was cool about it. But th to me, those little stories are gold. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, I think we're onto something cool. Like, let's go, you know. And so then the life component, we started doing it um, every couple of few months. We were doing a live show and they're super fun, man. We have a happy hour, which is my favorite part of the show. Guys just get lubed up. The guest is cruising around, you know, we would invite, you know, anybody local. Troy would be cruising around. RJ was coming to a lot of them. Donnie Hanson liked the free beer, so he'd show up to all of them. Yeah. And so, you know, imagine being a, a imagine you're a, a basketball fan, right? Yeah. And you get an invite and for 30 bucks, you can come and have free beer, free pizza. They're going to interview Michael Jordan. You can yeah. talk to him. Yes. And, and, you know, there's a couple other dudes walking around, stocked in and fucking whoever. Pippin's there cruising web. around. And maybe I'm Spud Webb. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You'd lose your fucking mind. You, you yeah. would just think, what? I can't believe this is happening, right? I mean, and motocross guys are more accessible than, than stick and ball. But still, to be in that environment where we're playing ping pong and cornhole and drinking and music's going. And you can you can go up and just have a conversation with Jeff Emig and, you know. Mm. Uh, it's, it was really neat. A lot of people were like, dude, that was the coolest fucking night of my life. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.